morning, Epiphany. Happy Monday. Uh, thank you to all of you that uh, joined together in our parish community on Sunday to give thanks and praise to God. Good Shepherd Sunday, right out of the Gospel of John. Uh, so that is, um, well, it's remarkable the metaphors that uh, are created by the author of John uh, in how we come to understand who Jesus is and, and the many different layers, like I talked about yesterday with regards to the gate, chapter 10, uh, verses 1 through 10, Gospel of John, that Jesus is the one that leads us through the gate. Jesus is also the gate. Jesus is also on the other side of the gate. And so you have these, the multidimensional nature of Jesus is so well represented in John. And, and it takes practice, like anything, to begin to hear how, uh, how we come to know this uh, both, both present, capable, future-oriented person, all in the same place, who is both human in truth, uh, fully, and also divine. And, and so we get that again, we're in ch chapter 6, you recall. We get that uh, here in chapter 6, uh, verse 30, in, in a very specific way. So you remember Jesus was there and he fed the 5,000, and they all wanted to make him king uh, in Capernaum on the north side of the Sea of Galilee. And so he, his disciples take off and he disperses the crowd. Uh, Herod Antipas over in Tiberias is interested in what he's doing. He's going to send some folks over there because spies have told him what's going on. Uh, the disciples take off in the boat. Jesus goes up into the hills to pray, but then he comes down later and he walks across the water. And the disciples see him and they're amazed. And he, he comes to them walking on water and they go to the other side. Then the folks wake up in the morning and they know the boat's gone. They know the disciples are gone. They know Jesus wasn't in the boat with them. And uh, they know he's not with them either. So they are curious. Some boats from Tiberias come. They jump in the boat. They go across to find Jesus. And then they meet him and they say, where have you gone? How did you get here? And Jesus says, you only came to see me because I fed you. I fed you bread. Which isn't, you know, it's not an unreasonable thing to go with the guy that's feeding you bread. But they go, and, uh, and then we get into these conversations about, yeah, it's not the bread that fills you, it's the Word of God that fills you. And that's where we pick up uh, verse 30 right now, right? A little background. Let me just read it. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? So see it and believe you. Let me go back to chapter verse 29, 28 maybe. Uh, they said to Jesus, what must we do to perform the works of God? Like, like, what do we do to perform? We want to perform. Show us how. And Jesus says, This is the work of God that you believe in Him whom He has sent. Now remember, we've talked about that word believe. And the way I define it is belief is seeing with the eyes of your soul. Belief is, is understanding with the eyes of your soul. And so to believe is to see the world from not these eyes or not this silly mind or not the facts of this body, but something a little bit beyond we see uh, the way God works. So, so Jesus says here, you want to do the works of God, see, see with the eyes of your soul. And what do you look at? Well, he says, I'll make it easy, look at me. That, that's what he's saying. So that's where we pick up. And so they say to him, what signs are you going to give us then so that we may see it, see these works, and believe you? What works are you performing? Like, show us something material. So here's the dude that just, yeah, he, he, he uh, cured the official's child. He turned water into wine. He fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. Um, what signs are you going to give us? So anyway, uh, Jesus says to them, uh, and then they say, and the, because this is the sign we got in the past, they say our ancestor, and when they refer to ancestor in John, just like when they refer to prophet, they refer to Moses, right? This is their Moses um, the descriptor. It says our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, um, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. And so Jesus is right locating the reality of creation. 
Everything that we have, everything that we eat, everything that we see with our eyes is given to us by God. Manna, miracle, right? Bread on the ground in the desert that they picked up and they ate, given by God. Not, not given by Moses. Understood by Moses. Why? Well, Moses had the capacity to believe. Like he had the capacity to see with the eyes of his soul. And when, when you see with the eyes of your soul, you begin to see the world a little bit differently. You begin to see the world how God designed it to be seen. And that allows you to do particular things. Well, in Moses' case, understand and collect and distribute the manna. And Jesus goes on in verse 33, For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Life to the world. Now, there's life, and then there's God's life. There's divine life. When we sit in a world right now that is so encumbered by uh, this terrible virus, uh, that is taking away life, it is really important for us to keep in mind that it does not take away from us this life, abundant life, God's life. Because the life that God gives us, the life that we can rest in, even in times when people are losing their lives, they're not losing their relationship with God. And Jesus is reaffirming this here. And then the folks hear that and they say, Wow, give us some of that bread, sir. And Jesus says to them, I am that bread. I am the bread of life. Let's leave it there for today. I'm glad to see you. We'll pick it up at verse 35 tomorrow. But know that you're in my prayers. Know that I love worshiping with you. Uh, know that uh, I love you. And peace upon your souls.